Okay, so we are in Birmingham at the SEBDA conference and Asha has kindly agreed to share some of her time and expertise. Do you mind introducing yourself first of all? Yeah, of course. So uh, I'm Dr. Asha Patel, a clinical psychologist and founder of uh, Innovating Minds. Um, the approach is actually how can we create a whole school approach um, within schools and make it sustainable. Okay, so you're happy to share some practical ideas for people who might be watching this and you said that in the whole this is about moving from kind of punitive to therapeutic, is that right? That's right, yeah. So we're looking at actually how, what can schools do to shift from more punitive approaches to actually more therapeutic approaches that supports children's mental health but also the engagement within the classroom. And why should they do that? What's the benefits of, you know, what, what's wrong with punitive? So what we're finding is actually that um, research from trauma and attachment aware is actually saying that children's uh, mental health needs needs to be considered and then we have a look at some of the practices that go on in school so when we look at uh, detentions for example or maybe using food as a way to uh, punish a child in kind of stopping them maybe having a dessert or something like that mm -hmm. we actually show that the, it's re-traumatizing uh, students and the pupils that you find maybe in detention are generally the same ones time and time again and schools are saying actually the students are clocking up hours and hours, so they owe the school like four hours worth of detention. So you just think, actually, is it helping uh, mm. or not? So we're actually interested in what other approaches can we offer schools and what can they do themselves that actually support children and their mental health, but also that they learn um, strategies that they can take on after school. So when they go into a job, they don't like somebody or don't get along with somebody, they're not going to be put into detention. So they actually need to learn skills that they can emotionally regulate themselves. So if they're feeling... Uh, intense anger or dislike to somebody actually how can they have a conversation uh, to repair that relationship again so if we do that in schools at an early age and get them used to the language and giving them the strategies and actually to say sometimes it doesn't work and that's okay so they kind of get to experiment within the schools so they're developing lifelong uh, skills that they can then take into employment and their future lives and relationships that they go on to. So what does that actually look like in the school setting? How do you implement that? So one of the first things that we look at and one of the uh, things that need to happen is actually senior leadership team being on board. Okay. So we actually ask that really difficult questions to schools and to le leadership teams. Are you ready? Is this okay. a priority for you? Um, are you ready to ride a storm? Because it's not easy to do. Sometimes we think it's a bit of a tick box to say, okay, we've got mindfulness, we've got yoga coming in, so that's us looking after everybody's yeah. mental health. But the reality is, is actually we ask you those difficult questions. So we want to build that reflective practice within schools so that actually staff are reflecting upon their own decision making. And then also they're using that language with students as well. So students are also thinking about, okay, why did I do that? What went wrong? What could have done differently? What went well? How can I repair that? And who's involved in it? So one of the things is actually getting senior leadership team on board and actually engaging in it. Sometimes we've had people say, yeah, go in and do that but then don't involve me. And actually that doesn't work because you, you've got to live and breathe it as well. So you have to be ready to engage in self-reflection, which can be really difficult because maybe everyone's had their own personal challenges. Yeah, of um, so to bring those up, and it's not about everybody bearing bones and talking about their, their own traumas uh, that have taken place, but it's actually thinking about, well, this is what I bring to the table. When I step into the doors, I'm still a human being. Yeah. So it's thinking about what can senior leadership to, uh, teams do, but also get them to challenge their own thinking and decision making and the language that they use. So one of the important things we talk about is language and the okay. change. So actually it's less about they've done this and they're attention seeking because we all like attention. So I'm not sure why somebody wouldn't be attention seeking, but actually it's not about blaming. So mm -hmm. it's more about unpicking things together as a team and saying, okay, what, what did we do? What worked? What didn't work so well? But then also senior leadership teams and teachers being in a position to say, actually, whose interest was that decision made in? Okay. So we hear things like exclusions, fixed term exclusions. So we can ask that difficult question. Did you make that decision because you felt the pressure from staff? Mm -hmm. Or was it in the student's best interest? Okay. What is it that's going on in those decision-making processes? That's quite a difficult thing to challenge, though, isn't it? Because this might be a school where they've done things a certain way for a really long time. Or there's an expectation that a child misbehaves. There should yeah. be a punishment for that. So how do you overcome 
Some so people. the overcoming of that is actually is because some people actually just don't have the information they don't know. Okay. Um, so it's not about criticizing saying actually what you're doing is wrong. It's mm. actually saying here's another lens. It's a bit like a filter on Snapchat where you put a lens yeah. or glasses and you kind of see things from a different point of view. Sure. So we're just giving people some language, some skills to actually think from a different lens and then okay. come to a middle ground where actually from the educational point of view and the systems that they have to go through, how they can link it with a therapeutic approach. Yeah. So one of the things is about actually having that difficult conversation with staff and letting them know actually this approach might annoy you. You might get ticked off that you've seen a student hit somebody or see even being disruptive in classroom, for example, and you see them going out uh, for a cup of coffee or hot chocolate, not hot uh, coffee, hot chocolate, mm -hmm. uh, for example. And you actually think, well, that student's been rewarded for mm -hmm. that, but actually it's about that therapeutic relationship that they're building with somebody else. And actually that's the time that they can re-regulate themselves because you're trying to engage in a conversation with them straight away. Yeah. That front part of the brain that does all of that processing isn't working at the moment because it's so aroused. But how, I mean, you are rewarding the behaviour though, aren't you? I mean, if a child knows that, you know, I kick off, then I get to go out of class and sit and have hot chocolate, what's going to stop that happening again and again and again? Because I'd love to get out of class and get yeah, a Yeah, of course, hot that's a really good point. So actually, in a therapeutic uh, perspective, it's about an individualised uh, reaction. Mm -hmm. So it's not that every time that you kick off, for example, that you go for hot chocolate. It's about knowing that student. Mm -hmm. So it might be actually, how can we... Uh, put strategies within the classroom so they don't have to leave the classroom. Okay. So we've had um, some people, for example, who have put tents in their classroom. So they can engage in the classroom, but actually maybe they're just not right to engage, uh, sit at the desk for that 10 minutes at a time. So mm -hmm. they're kind of going in um, so to, to yeah. doing that. So it is really dependent on, on that relationship. And that's why we say, actually, we could have the best intervention. Yeah. But if you don't have a really good relationship with your students, then actually it doesn't matter. All research shows that it's the therapeutic uh, rapport. It's and how, as a non-specialist, would you go about developing that therapeutic relationship then? So imagine we've got everyone on board and we've said, OK, in order to support these children whose behaviour is a real challenge to us, actually we need to build a therapeutic relationship, but I'm not an expert. What does that look like? Yeah, so you don't need to be an expert in it. Okay. It's about listening and okay. asking your students, what do you like, what don't you like? When I notice this is happening, what would you like me to do? Okay. Do you prefer to be left alone? Do you need me to come with you? Do you need to talk about it? Do you need to write it down? Mm -hmm. So actually asking the students. And, and what if they don't know the answer? Because maybe they've never learned. Yeah, really good. So actually it's about experimenting. Okay. So it's coming to the students and actually let's give this a go. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We'll find something else until it does. So it's about just investing your time. And it doesn't mm -hmm. need to take a long time. It might be whilst you're walking from the classroom into dinner hall, for example, okay. that you can be just talking about the student and getting to know them. Uh, and it's about them trusting you as well, that you're going to be there, you're going to create that safe uh, space for them to feel comfortable. And do you use this approach for everybody or is it just for like particular students? So this approach can be used for everybody. Okay. Uh, so particular students might find it more difficult and uh, it might be because they've had difficult relationships in the past mm -hmm. so they don't trust easily and um, so they might kind of keep pushing you away okay. but then that's about you having that resilience to keep going back to them and supporting them and just letting them know that you're there. Um, so it is a full school culture uh, and it's just about human interaction really. And how does that look in terms of like your kind of behaviour policy and your general expectations in class and that sort of thing? Does it have an impact there or is it more on that like one-to-one -one level? Uh, so with behavioural policies for example, so what we, what we say and what we're very clear about is uh, mental ill health isn't an excuse uh, mm -hmm. for violence and aggression. Schools have to be a safe place, yeah. uh, there has to be a line and that, uh, the school needs to know where that line is of actually somebody's at risk, the school's at risk, yeah. um, and it, it's about actually giving the children skills that they can actually find alternative ways to manage uh, okay. the emotions that are going on. But a part of the behavioural policy is actually maybe looking past the behaviour. So mm -hmm. it's finding other ways of what, what is driving that behaviour, what, yeah. what, what is a student trying to communicate, and it's those conversations that staff will be having between themselves and with students that will actually start to unpick, so what can we do to problem solve this for the student? What is it that they need? Because maybe that's their way, their way to cope yeah. with that. And it's been effective, so that's why they do it. So some people say actually it's, it's challenging, but it's challenging for us, but for them, actually that works. It's meeting, it, a, it's meeting a need for them. Yeah. But aren't some kids just naughty? I mean, how, you know, maybe a kid's... Board or just kid. do you know what I mean? Does this yeah. does this meet the needs of every child? Is there always is behaviour always meeting an unmet need or 
you know, are we sometimes looking for something that isn't there? So behaviour is communicating something. So mm -hmm. if it's communicating I'm bored or, or I don't find your lesson interesting or such, I just don't like you as a teacher. We don't <laughs> like everybody. We yeah. can't. Um, but it's, so it's a form of communication. So we don't have to go, OK, well, this has happened and we think the worst. It actually mm -hmm. might be, well, everywhere else it's fine. It's just yeah. here. And then you can unpick that. But you've got to be open to that and yeah. not feel like actually you're a bad teacher, you've done it wrong and you're not engaging. It's actually thinking, well, what works in other classrooms and who can support me with that? But also you said at the beginning about building the skills in the students, because actually when we go into the workplace, sometimes we are going to be bored. We're going to mm. be unchallenged by our work or we're not going to like the people we're working with. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that behaviour is acceptable. So, um, yeah, how do you go about kind of setting those sort of standards and building those skills for, the, for those pupils? So we, you can do it in lots of creative ways. So in some schools, they've, uh, we've done that interview strategies. It's uh -huh. like you're applying for a job within uh -huh. the school and yeah. then you go and get interviewed and you start employment or they've created actually like a home life within okay. the school. So yeah. people kind of come to school, they get money to then pay towards rent and stuff. So all these pretend kind of communities have been set up within schools to help them to manage yeah. uh, those kind of life skills. But then also it's those um, conversations where people from uh, other uh, year groups have had those conversations come back saying, actually, this is what I did, yeah. and then realise it wasn't so good, but then I've turned it around. Uh, oh, by okay, so peer support. Peer support and kind of getting people to talk about their own realities. Because I think sometimes we think that we're different, or we sit in ivory towers, yeah. when actually we've got a lot of life experience as well, and sometimes yeah. there is a barrier between uh, staff and students, but yeah. actually other pupils can help to bridge that. Absolutely. So, but it's okay to have high expectations on the pupils' behaviour. Essentially, it's about building the skills so that they're able to live up to those expectations. Maybe. Yeah, I think there's always that of having that you want to support the student because yeah. you want them to get to this place. If we start to drop expectations, think, oh, well, they're just naughty anyway, they're not going to go far uh, yeah. in life, then actually we're letting the students down. Yeah. Um, and it's up to senior leadership teams as well to recognise if they have got staff members that hold those views. Yeah. Because actually, who is it benefiting? And how do you challenge that if you see it? You know, maybe as a senior leader, I've sat down and I've gone, actually, this is an issue for this particular member of staff. How do I have that conversation and what do they need to change? So we found that uh, putting systems within place, so it's not creating more work for anybody, but have, mm -hmm. giving staff time to uh, reflect on what they're doing so uh, okay. and not having an agenda so not linking it to like performance management or anything yeah. a safe space that other people bring within the team bring items that they'd like to discuss and somebody keeping it uh, facilitating it yeah so that's where the conversations can take place where actually you there might be a student that does annoy you and it's just opening up and saying that and it, it's okay but what, yeah. what where can you learn what can you do from other people um so and then if that continues where actually a senior leadership member of staff is finding that actually it is particular staff that doesn't fit with the values and where the vision of the school is and it's up to them to have that conversation yeah. is this the right place for you because it also doesn't help their own mental health if they're mm. working in an environment that goes against their own values and principles and uh, beliefs about what education is for yeah. then actually it's not healthy for them either. And finally, you talked about the importance of language. So we're trying not to use that kind of blaming, shaming language. What would be your kind of tips? You know, imagine a, a teacher, a teaching assistant is tuning in and watching this video and they want to be using the right words. So they might have the right ideas, but they're not quite sure what words to be using. What Have you got any sort of tips there? I think the first thing is that um, the expectation, the expectation is not to be doing this 100% of the time. Okay. So it's like being a parent. So sometimes you're in a supermarket, there's lots going on and a child keeps throwing stuff in the basket or whatever and then you just lose it or you say something yeah. and you think, oh, <laughs> shouldn't have done that. That, yeah. didn't, that wasn't helpful. It, it actually then turned into a full-on blown tantrum. Yeah. But recognising that that happened and thinking, okay, next time that this is something I could do. So first thing I'd like to put out there that actually this is not an expe expectation you do this 100% of the time because okay. we're human, we, yeah. we can't. So what they generally say is 30%, even a 30% of the time is good. Okay. Um, that's reassuring. Yeah, so that's <laughs> what I think. I thought actually it's not possible. Try that, yeah, 30% yeah. <laughs> seems uh, yeah. like uh, manageable yeah. um, for people. Yeah, so you're trying to do it some of the time. Um, and okay, and what about when it does go wrong then? Do we revisit that and kind of apologise that or, or work with the people on that or do we just move on? No, I think it's actually really important to let the people know. So actually um, saying to the people, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't good. Um, mm -hmm. I could have handled that differently. Um, and apologise, you're human. If you let a student know that actually 
that wasn't great, that's not how I meant it, and it came out wrong when we talked about what type of language and yeah. how do you talk about something. And sometimes I find using the student's language helps. Mm -hmm. So you, And just clarifying with them, you said this, is that what you meant by it? Yeah. And then you've got a language that's created and used by them and actually saying, this is what I'm thinking, and I'm just being curious. So go with an open mind and just be curious and say, actually, this is what I'm thinking. Is it right? Is it wrong? Yeah. What What do you think? So being really inquisitive. Yeah. And yeah. not thinking that you know it all because we don't. Yeah. Okay. I like that. So we are fallible. We're able to make mistakes, and actually, we can learn from those moments too. I yeah. Like and then we're modelling for students. Actually, yeah. we're all we all do that. It's quite brave though to do that, isn't it? It is. But I think the best teachers are the rebel teachers, the ones that are brave <laughs> and put themselves out there that. and open themselves up to that because yeah. that's because that's what is teaching is all about. True. True. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. It's been really helpful. We'll uh, link to your stuff below. Did you want to summarise at all anything about your uh, organisation or anything else you want to say? I just think, just try, just give it a go. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not one specific training out there that's going to do it, so it's about trick feeding. Yeah. Just keep building on your own practice, and as long as in your heart and in your mind that you're willing and wanting to go there, it'll come over time. And, it, you know, just to send people away, it'd be really nice to give them like maybe a quick win, something they can do right away after doing this. And it might be something you've already mentioned. Um, and then maybe a challenge, a longer term thing they should work on. What would you, um, would you suggest? So a quick win actually would be go and ask one of your colleagues or ask somebody close to you uh, about what is it that I do when I'm in this situation? Because sometimes we're not really aware of ourselves. Ooh, yeah, OK. So I think it's a brave thing to do as well. But go to maybe your partner or a close colleague and say, when I'm feeling stressed, what do you notice in me? Mm -hmm. Because actually then, someone, then you start to recognise that within yourself. Mm -hmm. A longer term challenge would be to, uh, I guess, experiment with being open uh, through for a reflective practice of say, maybe you put away half an hour of your time a week uh, to reflect on uh, and ask yourself some key questions. What went yeah. well? What, what was difficult? And have I done stuff to move myself forward to whatever your goal is? Uh, I like that. So yeah, so actually having some 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 time to, to reflect, to challenge, yeah. but also to celebrate as well. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes definitely. Say, wow. yeah. Marvellous. Thank you so much. Thanks Great, for your thank time. You. And I look forward to your uh, talk later on as Thanks. well. Thanks. <laughs>